tell us a little bit about the Innovation District and then tell us, like, what does an executive director do? So if there's like there's other communities that are out there that are looking to put something together. If you can just give yeah, us kind so of a, a lot red of now. communities, probably where your listeners are watching, um, might have an innovation district. It's a pretty well established model around the country and actually around the world. Here in St. Pete, it's located right off our downtown core. Yes. Um, it includes uh, a university, two significant hospitals, a world renowned uh, museum. And so it's really an opportunity where you're looking for uh, g garnering or growing economic activity, particularly around science and technology. In many cities, it's around uh, medical areas, um, life science. For us, it's also around marine science because we have a large concentration of marine scientists. So my job is to help fuel the innovation district to make sure it's moving forward. So I work on placemaking, helping to create spaces and places, both public and private. I work on recruiting businesses and uh, talented individuals who might be entrepreneurs. And then I work on bringing those disparate, what used to be siloed organizations together. Now what happens, St. Pete folks is growing exponentially right now. Now this district here happened to be one of the first districts in St. Pete because it had the hospital, of course, just as you said, it had, it had the Marine, um, base which which is huge because if they get a couple contracts that can really expand them the 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 aspect of how you grow going along that whole waterfront talk to me about how you talk with people and how you bring businesses in there yeah so we have some unique aspects of the area but we're a coastal community overall so we but we have within the district a waterfront core and we have NOAA, U.S. Geological Survey, University of South Florida's College of Marine Science, Florida Fish and Wildlife. So we have these amazing partners. So I'm talking to particularly entrepreneurs who are looking for research partners or maybe a pipeline for their future employees. It's really easy to talk about that because we've created mechanisms where if they came here, they would get involved. Same with our hospitals. We have Bayfront Health, St. Petersburg, which is one of the oldest hospitals in our community, but then we next door and actually intertwined, Johns Hopkins out of Baltimore has their all children's hospital here, all their pediatric research. So sometimes we also will get companies that are looking for opportunities to partner with those organizations to see about either clinical experiences or research, longitudinal, long-term research. Now, it, it, it gets really intriguing. You know, St. Pete, folks, is 270,000 people, so it's still considered a small city. 300,000 is, is the biggest city. And we do have all these different types of districts. Um, where Allison is, I would say that job-wise, you have some of the biggest jobs, right? I mean, I'll, I'll, we you know, we're, we're trying to get, we're getting all this city together, folks, okay? Um, so when you deal, you're dealing with a much larger, you're dealing with the big hospitals, you're dealing with the um, uh, University of Florida, right? Uh, and then, of course, the, the marine aspect. It, it seems that when we do have hospitals anywhere, the hospital basically is the biggest growth area. So, so how do you manage the, the growth area of a hospital and then, of course, the neighborhood? How does that work? So that's an interesting question. So first of all, we have 7,000, a little over 7,000 employees and less than one square mile. Wow. So yes, we are one of the biggest uh, employment engines in the community. Um, and it's really interesting. Certainly the hospital has the large proponent. Um, you have to think about the fact that the hospital is running 24 seven, as opposed to maybe an average business that might be running five days a week typical office hours. Yes. So not only do they have what you might have for a normal business, but then they've got second shift and third shift. So a lot of folks. Um, we are traditionally in St. Petersburg and a lot of communities, our business districts were designed not to overlap with neighborhoods. So that was a traditional design, urban design. So we are surrounded by five neighborhoods. Now I will say a more contemporary design, and you'll see in a lot of urban settings, is where those uh, lines are now blurring. You're getting neighborhoods who are looking for a neighborhood cafe or some small amenities, retail, and you're getting 
living in a business district, um, multifamily homes, maybe apartments or condos that can then serve the employers. So we work real closely with the neighborhoods we surround. Um, each one has its unique kind of vibe to it. And they have different sort of affiliations with the innovation district. Many of the employees live in those neighborhoods, uh, but it's important to continue to have conversations, particularly on the seam between the businesses and the neighborhoods to make sure that the seam or that line is really serving both parties. And you know, when you look at the map, if you look at the Google map, folks, okay, we're really lucky that we do have a nice seam. You have a nice seam going down forth. There's no doubt about that. Oh. Yeah, and, and what does happen, I can tell you just from, ex from experience, which is pretty cool inside the neighborhoods, it's amazing how many folks from the hospitals that do want to live in the community so they can actually walk to work, because that's very unusual that you can actually do that. And basically there's so many neighborhoods around the hospitals that they actually can walk to work. Yeah, I think we, and each neighborhood's got a little bit different feel for it, right? Because yes. one of our neighborhoods is the downtown core, which is predominantly multifamily, higher rises, gives you a very urbanized lifestyle, which is awesome. You can walk to dinner, you can walk to the grocery store and everything. On the opposite side of us, you have more of a traditional neighborhood and uh, kind of a funky older homes. Uh, everybody sort of has... Uh, gardens and artists and everything. And then in between, we have a historic neighborhood. So we really do offer, I will say, like every community that's growing, we're challenged by where do our younger employees or, you know, entry level employees as people are growing their careers, where do they live? How closely can we get them? So there's a real conscientious effort right now to look at m different price points on housing. And see, that's what's so cool about St. Pete. That, that is, it, there's no doubt. Talk to me a, a bit about the marine aspect, the NOAA, because it's pretty cool. We have that presence. It'd be nice if we could get a bigger presence, but that's a great presence right now. Oh, it's fantastic. So we actually have in St. Petersburg the largest concentration of marine science organizations in the Southeast US. And I always jokingly say to people that these are folks that if they were at a conference or anywhere around the country where a group of marine scientists were to get together, they're rock stars. But in our world, they're the guy in front of you in the grocery store. Right. You don't have no idea that they're there. Um, and so we have NOAA. Uh, we have U.S. Geological Survey, their coastal mapping program. We are the home base for two of the research vessels for the state of Florida, the Hogarth and the Weatherbird. We have SRI, Stanford Research Institute, College of Marine Science, Florida Fish and Wildlife, their research institute.